Hey everyone, uh, I wanted to share some information that I learned recently um, about working on an AR and specifically about dealing with the castle nut. So recently I did some work on my AR and it required me to remove the castle nut and I had never removed a castle nut before. So I you know, did some research and watched some different videos and a couple of things that I, that I learned that I thought was interesting. Um, first of all, if you're gonna remove the castle nut on your AR, um, invest in a good armorer's tool. Uh, this is the one I purchased. You can get these things online and in different places from 10 to $20 and it's worth the investment. Do not try to remove this castle nut with any other kind of tool. I've seen people using various methods, wrapping tape around channel locks and using adjustable wrenches and you're just gonna cause damage to your to your castle nut and maybe even further damage to the gun. So um, these things are expensive and you don't wanna wreck your, your expensive gun. So make the investment and get yourself a castle nut. Um, so first of all, taking the castle nut off. I had never taken one off before and I'll be honest with you, I was pretty nervous. It was kind of a nerve wracking situation. Um, you may or may not know that most manufacturers uh, stake the castle nut and what that basically means is they take some sort of punching device and they transfer some material from this rear plate that's on here and they transfer it into a notch on the castle nut and that kind of locks it in place. Uh, so if you've never taken one off before, and you're taking yours off for the first time, it's on there pretty darn tight. And so if you have your tool, mine actually has two places that fit my castle nut. This area here will fit and this area here will fit. And uh, I used this area here to take it off because it has three little protruding pins that lock into the grooves on the castle nut. And I have my rifle mounted on a vise with a, with a magazine block. And so basically you would put this on here and you would you know, crank down on this thing to loosen this castle nut. And like I said, it was a little nerve wracking. This thing started to twist here and I didn't want to crack anything on the lower so I was kind of holding it and giving it support as much as I could um, but I had to break that loose where the where the stake is and it did come loose um, you know I was kind of giving it some good pressure and then it finally kind of popped loose so uh, it will come off um, but it is a little nerve-wracking just do a good job of supporting the gun now putting it back on um, I wanted to replace my rear plate on here and do some other things to the gun, so that's why I had it apart. When I was going to put this thing back on, I had done, uh, done some research, and some of the uh, instructions that I had with the new rear plate suggested that this castle nut be torqued to 40 foot-pounds, plus or minus two, uh, according to the uh, Magpul instructions for the new uh, replacement rear plate. So I started thinking to myself, how in the heck are you going to torque this rear castle nut? How do you get a torque wrench on here? That's it's impossible. So after doing some research, what I found uh, out is that you can take your your uh, wrench, your armorer's wrench, and on my wrench, you'll see there's a square hole right here. That's a half inch square, and what will fit into that half inch square is a half inch ratchet or more importantly a torque wrench and my in order to get 40 foot pounds I had to use my 3 8 torque wrench so I actually had to put an adapter on here to uh, to uh, go from a 3 8 drive to a half inch drive but then basically you lock your torque wrench into that hole like so and this is how you torque your uh, you set your torque wrench of course to the proper foot pounds and this is how you would go about torquing your um, castle nut in place now after doing some research and finding this out i saw a lot of arguments online about if the uh, wrench is applied to the nut up here and the torque wrench is back here doesn't this change the um, the torque? Do you lose torque pounds being transferred from the torque wrench here to the nut down here? 
And after doing a bunch of research and, and listening to people a lot smarter than, than me, uh, engineer guys, what I found is that if your torque wrench is at a 90 degree angle with your armorer's wrench, so here's my wrench, 90 degree angle torque wrench to here, the torque applied here will be exactly the same as the torque applied here if you're at a 90 degree angle. And I kind of experimented with this a little bit. I, I you know, put this, set this at, a, at uh, only 30 pounds because I didn't want to go straight to the maximum 40. I played around with it and, you know, it felt um, pretty accurate. Obviously, I can't feel what 30 or 40 pounds feels like, but I can tell you that I, that I'm mechanically inclined enough to know that I was not over torquing it and yet I was still getting it very snug. So that's the trick. Um, if you have a torque wrench, you attach the torque wrench to the armorer's tool and you keep it at a 90 degree angle. And if you have it at a 90 degree angle, the torque applied here will be the same torque applied there. So you get your torque, uh, you get your armorer's wrench on there, get your torque wrench in place and apply the pressure until, it, uh, until the torque wrench clicks. And there you have it. So that was something new that I learned and I thought I would share it. I didn't find a lot of videos on that online, so I thought I would create a video and share it with everybody else um, if you're wondering how the heck to do that, just like I was wondering how the heck to do that. So there you go. Have a good day.